Hey everybody, so today we're going to get into Elastic and Bim Beats. Uh, before I go into this though, I want to mention I've got a new mic, new setup, new camera. I'm trying to figure out where to look so it's not awkward. Um, also, I'm trying to work out the, the volume in the uh, for the mic. So let me know if you have any feedback. Feel free to leave it below in the comments. So anyways, let's get into it. Um, Elastic and Bim Beats. I've been using these tools for about a year and absolutely love them. They're incredibly powerful and I'm hoping to share some of my insights and some of the cool things that I've done uh, in Elastic with you guys uh, so that you can see it and maybe use it at your own firm. There's going to be a few things I want to point out and I'll leave that to the end of the video. Um, but or sorry, not the end of the video, but the end of the presentation, which is only a, a couple minutes. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Uh, I did record this video uh, once before, and it was a bit too complicated. So I'm hoping that this video, the way that I want this to be, is very uh, simple, very uh, easy for you to understand so that uh, you can see that this tool is really powerful because you don't really need to know at an expert level what all of the nuanced stuff that these tools have to offer uh, to be able to leverage them. They're, it's, they're incredibly powerful. You don't have to know much uh, to be able to use them. So what is BIM Beats? This is what's on their site. So real-time dashboards, auto, data collection, PC analysis, automated action. So a lot of that stuff... It's a lot of it's interchangeable. You'll hear a lot of the same thing for Elastic, Bim Beats. They're kind of the same thing, and we'll look at some of that structure later on uh, in this video. So, uh, more, I guess, specifically, what Bim Beats does is it tracks all your different AEC tools. So, you can see here you've got Revit listed, which I'm sure a majority of people that watch this channel use that tool. Uh, Navisworks, Bluebeam, even some cool things like Bim 360 or Delta Vision. Dell Tech Vision, even some PC metrics. Um, so there's a, it collects all the different journal files, all the different information that those those softwares are generating, and then pushing that into Elastic so that we can view it uh, in dashboards and stuff. And dashboards, all of that stuff. I'm going to show you guys that. We're going to get into it uh, and, and and look at how to create all those things and, and whatnot. So. Uh, what is elastic? This is a different thing. Or elastic stack, you may hear that as well. Uh, I think this would be referred to as the elastic stack, stack because there's four parts to it. And so this is the stack of tools if you do see elastic stack. So you've got el elastic search, which is, the, which is what all of this is built on. Uh, it, you know, it's the RESTful distributed search engine. So this is allow what allows us to search all the different journal files and create really awesome dashboards from it from them. Um, Logstash, so it's a data collection engine, but it uh, unifies data's data from uh, disparate sources. So it, um, what you can do is have it hosted on a server, you can push to it. It's more heavier than a beat, which is what I'm going to mention here. Uh, but what you can do is have it hosted on a server, beats push data to it, it may add data there or, or change it in some way and then push it to a server. And then we've got the the beats, which is the data uh, uh, shippers, and they are installed on servers uh, as agents. But in this case, and the way that Bim Beats uses it, is they're going to be installed on everybody's computer at a firm, so that you can track all those different tools. Because traditionally, the way that Elastic works is that it, they typically have it on servers. Uh, Netflix uses it. Stack Overflow uses it, uh, and it monitors those servers. Uh, and there's other cases where uh, they use it for security purposes. So there's a wide range of things. Uh, the way that Bim Beach is leveraging this stack is a bit unique in, um, than what you would typically see Elasticsearch being used for. And then last, there's Kibana. So this is the open source visualization tool. It's like Power BI, but it's specifically built uh, to work with this, this kind of data. Um, and so we'll look at that. We're going to dive into that quite a bit. That's where we're going to primarily spend the most of our time uh, in there, building dashboards, building visuals, setting up alerts, and, and so on. Also, uh, there's a link here, and I'll post it in the description below, but that will uh, let you, um, that will expand on some of these, th these different, different tools within Elastic. So check out that link if you want to learn more. Also, this is a visual way of 
seeing, uh, this is the visual way of what we just saw before. So you've got Kibana, which is the dashboarding tool that's sitting on top. Elasticsearch, which essentially you can think about is the server or the database. And then you have Logstash and Beats, which are the things that are pushing and getting that data into Elasticsearch. Those are the agents, or Beats are the agents that sit on, on the machines. All right, so some stuff we'll, uh, we will learn. So visuals, we're gonna look at creating visuals. We're gonna look at creating dashboards, Canvas. So Canvas is pretty cool and I've created a couple, uh, but it's a more simplified version of dashboards. It's more, I guess, visual, visually uh, appealing if you're trying to, uh, it's, uh, the way that I think about it is like infographics. And so we'll get into those. Maps, which I haven't dived into those too much, but we'll, we'll take a look at that. Uh, alerts, setting up alerts I think is really powerful. So if you're looking at your data and you're looking for certain things to happen uh, and you want to be alerted by those things, um, uh, we'll look at setting those up and what that takes. Uh, and then maybe, I put maybe there because uh, I've got to look at like what these cost because there may be added costs for these. So machine learning, I do think there's a free, there's free up to a certain amount. So I've got to look into that stuff. So that's why I put maybe. But maybe we'll get into machine learning and graphs. All right, so these are some things to keep in mind. Uh, BIMBEATS is not free. So you do have to pay for it. It's, uh, they have it all listed on their, their website. And I'll show you guys that real quick uh, after this, after I close this. And we'll just look at their site. Uh, but there is, there, it is not free. Um, Elastic Stack has open source parts, but, but hosting is not free. So if you want to host it, uh, it, it's not free. So like if you're in, in my case, I'm hosting it on Amazon. I'm on a trial for now. And I think the amount of data that I generate isn't going to cost me anything really. But just keep that in mind if you're looking into this tool. BimBeats isn't free. And then also hosting this stuff on Amazon or AWS or wherever is not free as well. Now, I do think Elastic does, you do have options. You can, I think, locally host that all this stuff. But that tends to be a lot more expensive because you have to figure out how to manage all of that. But anyways, I won't go into any of that. But just keep that in mind. And then my setup is unique. Okay. So I, I have BimBeats. Log stash, everything set up on my personal machine just for myself. So it's tracking only what I am doing. Now, for me, uh, maybe I would want to know historically if I was doing certain things that could be improved. Uh, but it's not, it's a very unique case. Like you're not going to be using this tool at an individual level. This is more for a larger firm, uh, I think even a mid sized firm. I mean, my last firm, we were using this. We were about 14, 1,500 people. Uh, I know other firms, 200 people. So I don't know at what stage a tool like this would come in handy. Uh, but I would say 200 plus, a tool like this to be able to track all sorts of different people. Uh, and it's not to track their people per se. It's to track all the activity that's happening with AEC tools. Uh, but... And we'll dive a, a, a lot more into that as well. But I just want to mention my setup is unique. It's different. This isn't the typical case. But I am going to generate data. And then we'll still be able to look at uh, what's possible and what dashboards we can create. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to mention these things. Just keep these in mind uh, while we're going through these. And then, uh, oh, and if you want to join the Discord, there's that. And then you can also see in the description below. And then there's also the banner uh, right there that has a link to it. So anyways, um, let's just jump into, into Kibana and, and kind of just poke around in there for a little bit. So again, I don't want to get too technical with this. I don't want to go uh, um, crazy into detail. I just want to keep this pretty simple. But... This is Kibana. What we're in is, is Kibana right now. Uh, this is going to be where we primarily are at uh, this entire time. We're going to be looking at this, looking at data and stuff. Right now, what we're looking at is the discover part of Kibana, which just allows us to look at the raw data. So that's why this data just looks a little bit confusing and that there's a lot going on here. So um, if I come over here, 
you can see that we're in the Discover tab. There's a dashboarding tab. I have no dashboards in here yet, uh, but I will be creating some uh, soon. So, you know, I'll create them and then share them with you. Uh, what's cool about this is everything that I make, I can just make available to you guys. So it's all free, um, and you're you're able to to just bring it into your environments and use them. So Canvas, not, again, nothing in here, and we'll look at that. There are some templates, which is pretty cool. Um, and then Maps and Machine Learning, I've set nothing up for these. Um, come down here and see machine learning there's nothing but we'll, we may dive into those we may dive or we will dive into maps for the graph and machine learning I we may get into that it depends on, on pricing and then last we have down here the visualize library and so this is essentially where all your visuals are being stored uh, but you can see if we went back to the dashboarding tool we can create our visuals from here so add your first visualization when you create that, that'll be stored in the, the visual library. But anyways, we'll look at all of that. We'll look at creating our own visuals. We'll look at Canvas. We'll look at dashboards. A lot of times we'll spend a lot of time in the Discover tab really analyzing this data, trying to understand uh, uh, what it is that we're trying to track, how do we you know, start from here and then get it into a dash or into a visual. So we'll spend a, a good amount of time in here as well. But um, but yeah, so uh, I think it'll be fun. I think this tool is incredibly powerful. There are some amazing dashboards that we were leveraging at my previous uh, firm, and uh, they were getting a lot of, of uh, or still are, getting a lot of use out of those. And so it's incredibly powerful. It's, I think it's really insightful to understand how people are using these tools across the firm. So maybe you can allocate training in certain areas, or maybe you can catch where there's a, a large, maybe you're working on a large project and there's like really slow open times, or maybe somebody keeps crashing over and over and they're not letting you guys know and you can reach out. And so we're gonna get into all those different things. Uh, I'm gonna make all of this available, what I can make available for free, I will. So dashboards, visuals, all of that will be free. You can download this. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's this is kind of it. Um, and this is the introduction video, and we'll, we'll kind of gradually start to get into other things in the future. Some other uh, resources I wanted to mention, and this, this could help you get prepared for like what I'll get into later on, or uh, just be other things that you can look into in the, in the meantime while I release videos. But the Elastic site is amazing. There's a ton of resources out here, so I definitely recommend checking this out. Um, also, here's the article that I uh, used to, um, or to that I grabbed those those descriptions from. So I'll put I'll put that below, and then you can uh, read into this a little bit more uh, if you want more information uh, on on the Elastic Stack. Lastly, here's Bimbeats their site. So I'll put this below as well, and you can kind of see what this is about. They also they have their. Uh, um, their pricing down here so you can see uh, just how that works and then and then something I didn't mention so these are all the tools that they can track now but this here are all the things that they uh, plan on releasing in the future so they're always developing this they're always adding new things I think while I was using using elastic they added tally uh, which we were using or still are using at, at uh, my previous firm. Uh, and so we were able to understand how people were using that tool. So anyways, they're always adding to this. So if you're using a particular tool like Teclas, Libre, uh, they'll, be have, they'll have those releases in the future. So anyways, that's what I have so far. Uh, let me know if you have any questions at all. Let me know if this was too complicated or wasn't a good introduction. Um, and then, uh, if there is anything that you want to learn specifically about this, you know, let me know, feel free to comment or reach out to me, but yeah, I hope you like this video. I hope you like my new setup. Uh, let me know if you have any feedback on that, but anyways, uh, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.